One of the main benefits of having a system where becoming a doctor is extremely long and difficult is that it makes sure people who should not be entrusted with others' health don't slip through the cracks. But unfortunately, every once in a while this does happen, which is what we'll be discussing today in detail. It's not surprising for children and even many adults to fear going to a dental office. Trusting a stranger to poke around your mouth with sharp tools is pretty intense, no matter their credentials. But at the end of the day, these fears are usually irrational. For the most part, medical professionals have your best interests in mind, or at least will have motivation to perform the procedure as smoothly as possible. But what would happen if your dentist only served to benefit from performing poorly? Now how about if their best interest went against yours, and they served to gain from your harm? Now this may sound outlandish, but as we'll soon be learning today, this actually happened. Our story begins today in December of 2014, when Brandy Motley took her six-year-old daughter, Briel, to the local pediatric dentist. She and her daughter lived in Jacksonville, Florida, where the then 78-year-old Howard S. Schneider had been practicing for 53 years. Dr. Schneider was the only dentist in the area that accepted Medicaid, a government-funded health insurance, which is what led Brandy to take her daughter to him. When she first scheduled an appointment with the doctor, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. It was on the day of the surgery, however, that she became suspicious. After her daughter had been checked in, she was told that she couldn't sit with her. The nurse told her that kids acted better when their parents weren't in the room, and so they didn't like parents there for the procedure. In spite of her gut feeling, she stayed in the waiting room as instructed by the professionals. The operation lasted for three long hours. When the nurse finally came and got her, Brandy entered to find Briel in a horrifying condition. Her daughter was covered in blood and had bruise marks all over her body. She was also hyperventilating. When asked what had happened, the nurse simply told her that there had been an incident and refused to give any clearer explanation. Brandy promptly left, rushing her daughter to the emergency room. It was only then that she discovered the true extent of what the doctor had done. Once they escaped the parking lot, Briel took the gauze out of her mouth causing her mother to realize that all of her teeth had been pulled out. Now finally able to ask her daughter what happened, Briel revealed that during the surgery, Dr. Snyder had choked as well as hit her. Shortly after the incident, the horrified mother filed multiple complaints to the local police department for malpractice. Aside from a few brief visits, however, nothing came from them. After months of waiting for action, only to receive silence, she became impatient. Finally, she took matters into her own hands. In late April of 2015, she finally came out publicly against her daughter's mistreatment. She wrote on Facebook, Okay, I'm taking this man public. In December 2014, I took my daughter to the dentist for a cleaning and was told everything looked great. Then on Sunday, I got a call saying I needed to bring her back as soon as possible due to one tooth in the front. At this point, I grabbed her and walked out to the car. My daughter then took the gauze out and said, Mommy, they're lying to you. The man threw me and choked me while the lady sat on me. I took her straight to the ER and the police met me there. My daughter had a fractured nose, eye, and a bruised handprint around the neck. Please share the word so no other kids go through this. Attached to the post were disturbing images of Briel's teeth after the operation. Though very graphic, it confirmed that Brandy was telling the truth about her injuries. The post quickly went viral and this attempt uncovered the tragic reality that they were not alone. In fact, it turned out to be just the start of the story, as hundreds of parents and former patients of Dr. Snyder then came out of the woodwork to tell their own horror stories of their experience with the Florida-based dentist. One of these parents was Shireen Christopher, who posted her own experience with Dr. Snyder. As she told it, she brought her three-year-old son Zion there because he needed to have a single metal cap implanted. Snyder, with no consultation whatsoever, implanted 13. She recalled that while there, her son was crying, screaming, and strapped onto a restraining board. She concluded the post with a video of the incident. Another account came from Amanda Berry, a deaf parent whose five-year-old son was referred to Dr. Schneider for a crown. For unknown reasons, the doctor removed the boy's two front teeth. Her son later alleged that Snyder had choked him, a now common claim, and terrified the boy to the point that he screamed for his mom. Because the mother was deaf, however, she didn't hear. 
When Sarah Phillips took her two-year-old son to the dentist's office for a follow-up appointment, he came out with bruises around his neck. Concerned, she took her son to their pediatrician, which is when they discovered a scalpel slice from ear to ear on Mason's gums. She concluded that what appeared from the outside to be an unremarkable pediatric dentistry practice on the inside was a house of horrors, where the most defenseless members of our society, indignant children, are regularly assaulted. The controversy grew as more and more horror stories of Dr. Schneider continued surfacing. As it would turn out, this wasn't the first time the dentist had been publicly outed. In Brandy's original statement, she references other posts that exposed his abusive practices prior. So this treatment of children had been outed online before. But more concerning was the allegations against him spanned over decades. In 1995, a malpractice suit filed against him was settled out of court, claiming the dentist had unnecessarily placed 16 crowns into the mouth of a three-year-old child. He ended up paying $7,500 to the family. It was also revealed that the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office had been called to his office twice in the past, once in 2001 and another time in 2013. Both calls were regarding his excessive use of force. Soon, the Parents Against Dr. Howard Schneider Jacksonville, Florida Facebook group was established. Protests began as outraged parents picketed outside of Schneider's office. The story quickly reached mainstream publications, as hundreds of thousands of people became familiar with the horrifying allegations against this dentist. And by the end of the month, a civil suit was formally filed against him, accusing him of assault and battery. Over 60 families joined the case to testify. To them, it wasn't about money, but about justice. With so many families in the suit, the stories of abuse varied in severity, but their allegations generally boiled down to the following allegations. Schneider would perform unnecessary tooth extractions with no consultation, and conducted them without anesthetic. Instead, they alleged that he would choke the children out to the point of unconsciousness before fraudulently billing for the operation. Children would often come out of his office with cuts and bruises, and told their parents that Schneider had threatened them. They claimed that he would yell at them while wearing scary costumes. The dentist also warned the children that if they ever spoke out about what happened, their parents would die. Between the evidence that reinforced their validity and the fact that the accusations span over decades, the mystery is less if the abuse actually occurred, but why it happened. Why on earth would Howard Schneider treat his children patients like this? Was he simply a sadist who received some kind of pleasure targeting the vulnerable? In court, it was argued that it might have been done simply for financial motives. As stated before, Schneider was the only dentist in the area to accept Medicaid. This naturally attracted poor parents, aka clients who would have more difficulty fighting back. This would explain why previous accusers settled out of court, and previous action was never taken. In those last five years of practice, Schneider received $4 million in Medicare reimbursements. And remember, he'd been operating in that area for over half a century. According to the lawyer who represented the families in the civil suit, Medicaid was paying him per tooth. This would explain why he would unnecessarily pull out so many teeth. He noted that if Schneider capped a tooth twice then pulled it out, he could successfully obtain benefits for all three. Though only 60 families were involved in the suit directly, it was alleged that Schneider potentially had thousands of victims. In regards to his mistreatment of kids, the dentist refused to speak to the Department of Children and families. Throughout the entire situation, he maintained his innocence. He stated that he didn't worry about the allegations, because he knew they weren't true but the impact he had on the community spoke for itself. One commenter who lived in the area summarized its effects on the local discussion as really crazy. They wrote, This story broke a couple weeks ago locally, and since then adults have been coming forward with their stories of what he did to them when they were kids. Many of them thought they had false memories because they were so outlandish it couldn't be true. Everyone I know has a story about a friend or co-worker who went to this guy as a child and was traumatized. Unfortunately, this story doesn't have a happy ending. In February of 2018, the charges against Howard Schneider were officially dropped. It wasn't because he was found innocent, but rather due to his deteriorating mental condition in old age. The dentist was found too incompetent to stand trial. Because of this fact, it's unlikely that he will ever face real punishment for his crimes. Though many have argued much of his staff should have been held accountable as well for sitting by and allowing children to be mutilated for financial gain. Howard Schneider is many people's worst nightmare come to life 
a man who preyed on not just the unfortunate, but also the most vulnerable of society. And even if it were driven by profit, his treatment of children was horrific. Many wondered if he was always this bad or over the five decades of practicing became worse over time. The only thing that can be said for sure is that he traumatized hundreds if not thousands of people for their entire life. At the end of the day, he voluntarily forfeited his medical license when the suit began, but as he was in his late 70s, he was likely already going to retire anyways. He had already made his millions and faced no charges. If there's one thing to learn from this video is that if you're ever going to entrust someone else with your health, make sure to do some research beforehand. And with that thought, I'll end the video here. So until next time, thanks for watching.